Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Slovenia ensnared within EU troika as housing bubble bursts. New European mortgage law aiming at averting housing market bubble. UK attempts to battle EU over imposition of financial transaction tax. French ministers wake up to the United States of Europe. Plus, new EU fishing legislation as Norway denounces the 1986 agreement. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Heads up, folks, here comes the next lamb to the slaughter at the altar of EU worship. Slovenia finds itself in breach of EU treaty rules over debt-to-GDP ratios, and so the EU troika are rolling into town with their merry band of economic hitmen. This article is full of body and interesting information. Its key line threatens my prediction about Ireland being the next to fall at the hands of the barons of the Tower of Babel. Even after a successful domestic debt sale two weeks ago, the country may need assistance from the European Union and holders of bank bonds, including the most senior creditors, could be forced to take losses. Going on to say, such a bail-in, which would be the second in the Eurozone after Cyprus. However, there is still time for a dramatic economic implosion in Ireland, but it's all reliant on the timing of the asset-to-holdings audit on their two main banks. In the interim, the Slovenians might want to use the euro to protect their assets by buying either silver, gold or AR-15 assault rifles. New legislation will force lenders in Europe's 6.5 trillion euro mortgage market to check the creditworthiness of potential customers and their ability to repay, effectively banning self-certified loans. The rules would also make it illegal for those carrying out credit checks within banks and other lenders to have their pay linked to the number of mortgages they approve, a practice blamed for encouraging irresponsible lending in the past. Now we've seen this kind of thing before with all the FSA regulations, most recently in the pensions market, where financial advisors were stopped from taking their fees from the invested principal. The result, anyone seeking financial advice has to pay their IFA on top of the investment provision. In my opinion, this puts a barrier in the way and makes people less likely to invest in pension schemes for their future. But perhaps that's not a bad thing, given that the EU's eye of Sauron covets savers' investments with envy and the intent to levy, also known as a bail-in. The British government is going to the European Court of Justice, not a traditional ally of the UK, it must be said, to mount a legal challenge against the financial transaction tax. EU law allows a member state to contest any measure that would have a disproportionate effect on its interests. One third of all derivatives and trades in the UK would be caught by the tax, so the UK certainly has an arguable case. In reality, I think it's unlikely this challenge will hold any gravitas, as it would plunge a gaping hole in the side of the fiscal integration and unification strategy of our Bruswellian overlords, hampering deeply their strive for a federal United States of Europe. Is leaving office from the EU such a dramatic revelation for ex-ministers, or do they perhaps put something in the water at these great towers of Babylon? Why then is it that whenever we hear statements like those in this article, they're always from ministers who have left the EU Parliament? The bit I particularly like about this article, about the construction of a United States of Europe, is this quote from the French ex-EU minister. I do not believe for a second in a supranational vision where the nation-states transfer their competences to higher level and where the states will be reduced to regions. The European people will never accept that. Well, you're quite right. I suspect that to be true. But the Nazgul lords of the EU Commission won't let that stand in the way. They just won't tell them. Or perhaps they'll do a ringer ringer referendum until they get the right answer. (laughs) 
Now that reminds me, I must get on to Sue to get Mr Fernley Whittingstall on the phone, as it seems our witless European puppet ministers aren't listening. There is new legislation in relation to fishing management policies in the Skagerrak, which are the waters between Denmark and Norway. The main principle of the proposal is to create a discard ban for the Skagerrak. Discards of perfectly good fish have come as a consequence of the common fisheries policy, which disallows the landing of certain species of certain sizes of fish. This required that the fish are thrown back into the sea, often dead or dying. This is a controversial requirement. No, let's stop. Just stop for a moment. It is not controversial requirement. It's ridiculous, nonsensical, juvenile, idiotic, cretinous. There is no controversy. Everyone outside the parliament can see that needlessly killing and destroying fish stocks is probably not a good idea. How, or indeed a better question, why would you want to consider it any other way? Of course, this legislation does nothing to change the current policy of devastating the fishing grounds in EU waters outside of the Skagerrak. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced, and so throughout the month of May I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Now, speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entry by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I'd prefer like please, and most importantly sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So without further ado, today's video, which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, is The Canadian Police State from the Operation Paul Revere Infowars.com contest. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below.